All right. Wow, I, I don't think I've ever presented in a room as long and, and narrow as this. So, hey at the back, hey! All right. So, um, yeah, as my lovely introducer, sorry, I didn't catch your name. Elise. So as Elise said, um, I'm a principal developer evangelist. I'm not the principal developer uh, evangelist. I'm a principal developer evangelist at Salesforce. And um, I've been at Salesforce for about two years. Uh, most of the decade before that, I was at Sun Microsystems, working on um, single sign-on, security, identity federation, that kind of thing. If you want to fuel my personality cult, you can follow me on Twitter at MetaDaddy. And uh, you can ask me in the bar later on why I am MetaDaddy. And I do realize I'm the one session separating you from happy hour. So I'll try and make it worth your while. Safe harbor, don't buy stock of products based on what I'm going to say here, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a short session. It's about uh, 30 minutes. I'm going to focus on two use cases that hopefully show you enough about uh, integrating Twilio with Salesforce that you can get the idea and go on to do more complex things. I've uh, focused on some very, very simple use cases because once you've got these working, everything else on top is just sugar. It's, it's, it's totally easy once you've got the communication between Twilio and Salesforce working. So I'm going to show you how to uh, run a campaign with SMS and generate uh, leads within Salesforce directly from those SMSs using Twilio. And I'm going to show you how to do some simple call routing. So this is my user story. So I'm a marketing guy. And I want to run these campaigns, generating leads. And you know, I might, be, uh, I might have a short code from Twilio for SMS, one of those five-digit codes. And I might have that on soda cans or billboards or something and saying, send your email address to this number. And from there, I've got two pieces of information on the user. I've got their uh, email address, obviously, but I also have their cell phone number. And I, I kind of did some opt-in thing. I've got their permission to engage with them. Now, from the technical side, there are three main challenges here. One is being able to call into Salesforce from Twilio when we get an SMS. Okay, so we've got to figure that out. We've got to, when we receive that SMS, create a lead record and insert it into our database um, and associate it with the correct campaign. Because we could be running multiple marketing campaigns, maybe in different geographies, um, and receiving leads from all of them at the same time. And then we'd really like to call out and uh, send a reply to the, uh, to, the, to the lead, to our prospective customer. You know, it's kind of uh, polite. So just a little bit of sidebar. This isn't a pitch for force.com. I'm going to focus on the integration. But just for context, force.com is a platform as a service that allows you to create and extend business applications. OK, so you might be most familiar with Salesforce from the idea of customer relationship management. But we actually have a platform where you can build your own apps and extend that CRM or create completely new uh, custom applications. And when we write on force.com, uh, executable code is in a language called Apex, very like Java. Um, it's got some uh, funky bits to do with multi-tenancy and integration with our database. And the markup is in Visual Force. And that, we don't need to get a lot into the details there. If you've ever touched any Java, um, JSPs, ASPs, C Sharp, you know, the code in this will not be scary at all. One very important thing to realize is that all the code is running on force.com. You can't run force.com uh, Apex Visual Force on your laptop. It only runs in the Salesforce infrastructure in the cloud all the time. And I'm going to be using this Twilio helper library for Salesforce. Now, this is absolutely essential component. What this does, oh, that's nice. Uh, GitHub. I was going to just click on that from the PowerPoint slide, but PowerPoint decided it was not going to cooperate. So this is an open source 
library, it's on GitHub, that allows you, I'll go back to the, uh, the bigger version of the URL. So it gives you Apex bindings to access Twilio. And I'm going to look in detail at how to use those. OK. So pop quiz. Who's familiar with the concept of a webhook? OK, a couple. So it's just a, just a bit of convenient terminology. So when you receive an SMS at Twilio, Twilio wants to call your application at some endpoint that lives out on the internet. And we just call that endpoint a webhook. It's somewhere that Twilio can hook into your app at a publicly accessible place. Now, we can do that very quickly and easily on force.com via what we call a force.com site. So I'm going to show you a simple um, webhook to get so that you can get the idea. What I've got here is, can everybody see that? Do I need to go even closer? I've got a bit of code here that's the traditional hello world. And I've got two versions. So this is, this is my webhook. It's a REST resource. Well, REST in quotes, JSON over HTTP. And it's mapped onto this URL, a relative URL of hello. And when I post a name to it, it's going to say hello. And I've got the same thing as a get. So just to show, I can do gets and posts. I can retrieve query parameters, all that kind of thing. So that's the basics of talking to Twilio, because Twilio is going to want to call an endpoint. And if I go here, I can, um, projectors always do strange things to my laptop. So I can do that get and say, Twilio API developer edition, na14.force.com. So this is a publicly accessible URL with a service. Services Apex REST, and that's my relative bit hello, and my name is Pat. So I send it, and it says, well, hello, Pat. So code was executing over in some Salesforce data center somewhere, received that get, formulated that response, sent it back. Super, super simple. A couple of gotchas, if you go ahead and, and kind of try and get this working. You create what's called a site. To put, your, uh, to put your code out on a website. So there, Twilio API, developer edition, na14force.com. And by default, everything is secure. The Salesforce is an enterprise system. We always default on the side of inaccessible, secure. So we've got to actually, where's the button? There. We've got to actually explicitly make methods available for public access. So that hello method is down here somewhere. Enabled Apex class access. So I've only got two classes providing endpoints on my site that are accessible to the public. So it's very important. You'll, when, if you start doing this, you'll get weird errors that say, uh, you know, uh, no permission, endpoint not found, that kind of thing. It's usually because you've just not made it accessible. But there's my hello service in this enabled uh, Apex class access. So I'm able to put an endpoint on the internet for, uh, for Twilio to call into. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward. I tried it out. Now, what's going to happen is, so who's used the Twilio APIs? Who's received SMSs in an app? OK, a few. Oh, well, great. OK, about maybe more than half. OK, so what happens is I receive a uh, request from Twilio, an HTTP request, and it has a whole bundle of parameters. OK, it's got the uh, from phone number. It's got the incoming phone number. It's got the body of the SMS, um, a whole bundle of stuff. And then it's very straightforward for me to extract data from this request and start pushing it into Salesforce. So what I've done is, um, you know, Salesforce is set up for this kind of thing by default. I've got a marketing campaign, and I've just extended it with a phone field so that I can match on that. And let's, let's go to the code, because I, I prefer code to slides. So 
I'm going to go back to the boilerplate in a, in a few minutes. So from my incoming SMS, I can get from, to, and body. And this gives me everything I need. So like I said, I could be running multiple campaigns at the same time, each with its own short code number. So I locate that in the database. So select the ID and the name uh, and the number of uh, messages I've sent from the campaign where I've got a match on that phone number. And then I want to insert a new lead into Salesforce. So this is normally what a sales guy might do after a conference or your uh, booth staff might do. You get all those business cards, you enter them into the system. But here I'm doing it automatically. I've got a new lead. Last name and company have to be their mandatory fields, but I'm going to set them with dummy data. I don't know them yet. But I just set up email and phone and insert that into the database. Now, a nice thing here, I was, expect, I was expecting an email address in the body of the text message. But I haven't done any validation at all. I've just assumed that um, this lead email, I just got it out of, uh, I just got it out of the body of the message. Because in force.com, email is a data type. And if I try and insert a lead with garbage uh, instead of a well-formed email address, it's just going to throw an exception. So I'm handling that here. So I'm saying, whatever you sent me doesn't look like an email address. Please try again. Uh, I link up the lead to the campaign, and we're done. I can send a reply, thanks for registering, and uh, an email out to that new address and say, hey, you're in the campaign. Um, you know, opt out like this. So it's a total of 85 lines of code to go from receipt of that uh, message from Twilio. That uh, is it a get or a post? Let me remind myself. It is a post. Receive of that HTTP post, extracting everything we need, and putting it in the into uh, into Salesforce. Now. There's a problem as things stand. I've put a publicly accessible endpoint on the internet that's expecting posts in, in that's interesting. In, re, in response to which, it's going to start inserting data into, into my Salesforce organization. Can anybody see a problem with that? Anybody could post messages with from, to, and body, and I could start just my, my Salesforce would start filling up with junk leads, and it'd be completely useless. So helpfully, Twilio signed that uh, post request, and we have to val validate that. Otherwise, um, yeah, it's game over. We've just opened up our Salesforce environment to uh, um, the bad guys. All your system will belong to us. So. We go and have a look. I kind of skipped past this earlier on. This is part of what, what the API does for us. We get a signature in an HTTP header, X Twilio signature. And what we have to do is we get that signature out of the header. We reconstruct the URL that uh, Twilio called. So we've got all the information we need to do that in the, in the context. We get the parameters that Twilio sent us, and we just send that all off to uh, this validate request. So what's, what's gone on is that that signature is basically a hash of all those parameters and a shared secret. And this API utility method just checks that that um, is correct. And if it's not, then um, we just get a 403 uh, error and a failure message. So uh, I could even test that out. So uh, what we call, got, SMS to lead. So Apex rest, SMS to lead. I'll just say from equals one more one. Yeah, uh, it'll, it's a post. <laughs> uh, hang on. Let's send it a post, SMS. Lead. Yeah, failure received null, and I can go in. I can drill into a bit more 
and see that actually it's uh, it's given me 403 forbidden. So always, 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 when you put a publicly accessible endpoint on the internet, and you have to do this with Twilio, you have to do this with many services that expect a webhook when you're tying systems together, please make sure it's secure. Now, how did we reply to that SMS? I kind of glossed over that. Um, there was just a kind of a reply method. Well, this is another part of uh, the Twilio helper library that abstracts away the details. Because what's actually going on, Twilio exposes this endpoint, and you send it a, a post with the um, destination uh, phone number and the body of the text. But again, helpfully, we get a wrapper in Twilio SMS that just lets us create a message with a map of uh, parameters and just say message create, and it gets sent off. We get um, a SID, an I, a message ID in response, so we can check everything um, uh, went off OK. But again, you have to always remember security. I, I said Salesforce is an enterprise system, always default secure. Again, what you will find if you try building these integrations, you'll call an endpoint like api.twilio.com, and it will fail because you have to actually explicitly go in to your Salesforce environment and configure that endpoint as um, allowed. So if I look for remote site settings, I've set up Twilio there. So every step of the way, you, or it's, it's always a balance between programmer frustration, oh, it didn't work, and hey, it actually does need to be secure. So. What I'm going to do, and what I'd, I invite you to do, I don't do any validation on the email address, rather, apart from it being well formed. So you don't actually have to send your email address. But if you text an email address to 408 724 um, let's see. I'm going to do it myself. And I know uh, I can't actually talk and type, especially on one of these things at the same time. I know my colleague Katie tried it earlier on as well. So I texted um, my email address. Thanks for registering, it says. And if anybody else tried it at the same time, of course, I'm collecting all your phone numbers, even if you're sending me garbage, uh, garbage email addresses. Yeah, there we go. So uh, I've got a whole bunch of leads in my system, uh, all created today. So Austin Wang, Simon Winthrop, presumably people in a room. So um, I've got an SMS campaign live on Salesforce. Awesomeness. So again, that was a very, very simple example um, with very, very simple code. But once you've got the, those two directions working, once you're receiving SMSs from Twilio and able to post replies, everything else is just a simple matter of code. Those are the, those are the real hurdles. And you can get as fancy as you like. So call routing. Let's do a little bit of voice. So again, my user story now. I'm um, more focused on uh, customer service, call center kind of use cases. As a customer service manager, when callers dial into the company, I want them to be greeted by name and then automatically connected to the correct account representative. So you know, all the ingredients are there when I receive a call from Twilio. Um, let's see how it can work. There's four real challenges. The first is connecting a voice call um, from Twilio to Salesforce. The second is, given that call, I've got to find the right rep for the right account for the incoming phone number. And that's actually probably the easiest bit of these four. I want to respond with the rep's name on the call live. And um, I want to actually connect that call. When, once I've said my little piece, I want to route the call to the correct recipient. 
So for, for calls, what happens is that we give Twilio another endpoint, and it's again going to send an HTTP message to that endpoint, and it expects a certain uh, content to be there. And it's effectively like loading a web page. It, it, it's expecting us to render what's called Twimmel. OK, who's it, who in the room has written some Twimmel? OK, cool. So, so about half the room knows what I'm talking about. So Twimmel is like HTML, but instead of writing headers and paragraphs, you're saying text. You're expecting um, touch tones. You might be um, forwarding a call to another recipient. And when the request comes into Salesforce for um, a Twimmel page, that call data is passed in as parameters on the request. So it's just query accounts it equals this, from equals that, to equals something else. So it's a very, very simple model, but that's actually what makes it very powerful because it's very, very easy to get working. So how does this work? I've got a Twimmel page. And force.com has a model view controller um, pattern. So I have my model is data in the database. My view is usually a web page, but in this case, it's the Twimmel. It's what my app is going to say on the call. And the controller kind of hooks everything together. So here on my controller, again, it's, it's just almost the simplest code it could possibly be. I get the from number out of the request. And then I've got quite an interesting query here. I've got a nested query because, first of all, I'm getting a call from a contact, somebody in our contact database. So I've got to say, I want the owner of contacts where I've got a match on the phone or the mobile phone number. So that gives me a bunch of. Um, user ID, IDs within my, my Salesforce installation. So for, for those, I want the actual name and the phone number of that rep with that ID. So that's why I've got this nested query here. So I get the, a, a list of IDs, hopefully one, and then the name and phone number. And then I've got just a little bit of code here to say, OK, if, I, um, if I've got a rep and I've got exactly one, then it's the first entry in that list. It's rep zero. I know who it is I've got to connect the call with. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to use the switchboard number, because I want this to still work. If you call in and you're not in our system, I want, it to, I want the call to go somewhere. I don't want it to just drop and, on an error. So that's really nice. I can locate the rep. I've got his name and phone number. So this is the Twimmel. So the request comes in, gets picked up by that controller, and then this is what would normally be rendering a web page in Salesforce. So any, any Salesforce users in the room? Who's got Salesforce login? Oh, great. OK, cool. Oh, excellent. Wow. Um, OK, so you've, seen, you've probably seen, well, you've certainly seen standard Salesforce pages, maybe even Visual Force pages. This is Visual Force. What we've done is we've disabled the sidebar, the header, um, all that good stuff, said what our controller is going to be. And we've said, instead of HTML, we're sending back XML. And we can just respond with arbitrary tags. So this is Twimmel. So our response is that we say, connecting you with, and this is, this is called a merge field. This is how we pull in data from our controller. Connecting you with rep.name. We pause briefly. And then we actually connect that call. We say, dial the rep's phone number. So again, this is I deliberately figured out the simplest possible use case to get this stuff hooked together. From here, you could log the call, log the fact that you made the connection in Salesforce. You could maybe um, have a message of the day that you say to the customer. You could do all sorts of things. You could have a menu that you give to the customer say a bunch of stuff and collect that dial to the uh, touch tone. OK, has anybody spotted the security hole in what I've explained so far? We've got an endpoint on the web. 
that's expecting a get, OK? If we don't recognize the from phone number, we're going to connect you with the switchboard. So we, we're doing it in response to an HTTP get. We're sending Twimmel that says, you know, we're going to connect you with this. What could possibly go wrong? Anyone? Yeah. Well, we're connecting them with numbers from our database. But you're on the right line. OK, think about this. If I'm a competitor and I've got a bunch of phone numbers for, for people who might be my, the customers of my company, I could just feed them into this and say, on the, in an HTTP request, this is a call from 408-999-1234 and see what happens. It might come back with the switchboard. I don't recognize the number. Might come back with that rep's name and phone number. Wow, that's powerful information. For a, for a competitor's customer, I've got the account rep's name and phone number. Well, it's easy enough to spoof uh, caller ID. I could just call them up and say, hey, this is Bob from uh, Bob's Widgets. Uh, I want to talk to you about your account. Wow, that's really bad. Um, we really don't want to be responding with that kind of information. So although Twimmel calls aren't explicitly signed, there's enough there that we can actually secure, secure the system pretty well. This uh, a little bit. Uh, let's go in. So what we can do is, what we get on the incoming call is the account SID. So that's a piece of information, not necessarily a secret. It's shared between Twilio and uh, my app. And I can get that from the parameters. That comes in on the HTTP request. And I can match that with what I think my account SID is and just throw an exception if they don't match. OK, so uh, any, anything that, that uh, doesn't have one of those is just going to, going to fail. Now, account SID, it's not necessarily a secret. OK, it's a property of my account. What if somebody found out my account SID? Well, every incoming call has its own unique ID. And what I'm doing here in the bottom uh, section of code is getting the Twilio client and actually sending a request to Twilio live while that call is, uh, is connecting to say, hey, tell me about this call identified by this 30-digit number that's difficult to guess. And if the status for that call is not ringing, so it'll be ringing because I haven't actually started responding yet. Um, I can throw an exception. So this is reasonably strong. It's not cryptographically secure. But it'd be really, really hard for an attacker to firstly guess my account SID and then somehow get hold of a call SID on that account that has a call in that little window of progress while it's ringing. So again, always, always, always. It's, it's not an obvious security hole in this implementation. Always um, get your code reviewed. Take it to somebody. Get somebody else to look at it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put myself in the lap of the gods and see if I can call from S Skype and see what happens. So it should recognize me. Connecting you with Pat Patterson. And then? In any moment? No, get ready for hideous. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we connected the call. So I'm, I'm my own sales rep. So, and if any of you, you can try it now. If any of you call this number, um, it's still going to ring my phone, but it'll say connecting you with switchboard. I set it all up just to go to my phone. So, so again, very, very simple to get things working. And again, you can imagine the directions in which you could take this. You could have uh, menus here. You could log what's going on. You could have some little message, whatever you like. OK, so how are we doing for time? I can hear people drinking beer. OK, so wrapping up. 
Um, yeah, the Twilio Helper Library for Salesforce. Check it out. Um, you don't have to write down the URL. There's a, there's a marvelous search engine that will, you type in Twilio and library and Salesforce, it'll take you right there. Absolutely essential. Really, really easy to use uh, Apex binding. The second thing I want you to remember or, or to kind of realize from this is that those business requirements require surprisingly little code. 85 lines to do that whole SMS to lead generation. That was including the security checking that it was a, a kosher message. And don't forget about security. Have your implementation reviewed. Take it to, uh, if you've got like an IT security department, take it to those guys that are used to looking for these kind of holes, or in, you know, just give it to another developer and say, hey, can you think of a way you could break into this? Because really, you want to find it, otherwise somebody else will. So with that, uh, I'll say thank you. And I don't, do we have a mic in the audience for questions? or? People just going to shout out. Who has questions? I've stunned you all into silence, and you're all here in the merrymaking outside. Oh, look, there. I'm curious, what's the um, level of test coverage that you guys have for the helper libraries that are already built? The, le the level of test coverage? Percentage of test coverage, right? Ooh, so you're a force.com developer. Um, it's, it's pretty high. Let me go, just go have a quick look. Um, I think they did a pretty good job here, our friends at, uh, at Twilio. Uh, da, 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 develop, they fix classes. Is it going to be in here? I'll press run or test. You can have, come and have a look in two minutes. But I, I, my recollection, it's like 88, 92, 87. You know, it's above. So yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much. And um, yeah, go grab a beer. <laughs>